Now, according to some polls, the Democratic Party could be on the verge of its most sweeping election victory since the 1964 vote. Not only winning the House and hold, not only winning uh, the White House and holding the House of Representatives, but regaining the Senate as well. But polls, as we know from four years ago, can be wrong. Now, one Democrat who has tasted both victory and loss is Terry McAuliffe, the former chairman of the Democratic Party and former governor of Virginia. Earlier, I spoke with McAuliffe from his home in McLean, Virginia, about the possibility and consequences of a blue wave sweeping U.S. ballot boxes. Former Governor Terry McAuliffe, thank you for joining us on I-24 News. Let me ask you, with all of your political experience and political instincts, how confident are you that this time the polls are correct and that Joe Biden will be uh, elected into the White House tomorrow or however many days after that it takes? Uh, about 90 percent. Nothing's a given over here in America. But 94 million Americans have already voted. We are on track now to have the largest vote turnout since 1876. Extraordinary numbers of folks. We're leading in all battleground states. It's going to be a tough day uh, tomorrow for Donald Trump. Actually, Trump was campaigning in Georgia yesterday, the first time a Republican nominee has campaigned in Georgia, which we haven't won the Democrats since 1992. That goes to show you how much trouble Trump is in. Now, since you raise it, there has been talk of a blue wave, not only helping Joe Biden, but uh, especially senatorial candidates in states like Georgia, in states like South Carolina. We're talking about Alaska. You were governor of a state that was a forerunner of a red state turning blue. So how confident are you that, uh, this, for example, the Democrats will retake the Senate, winning some of these formerly red states? So at the presidential level right now, we're even or up one in Texas. We have not won Texas in 28 years. We're up a couple in Georgia. We haven't won Georgia in 28 years. We're very competitive in Ohio. We're competitive in Iowa. So the battleground state, Michigan, Wisconsin, we're up substantially there. Pennsylvania, we're up seven there. We win those three, it's over. But we win Florida, which will come out early on tomorrow night. You will know if that goes blue, then Trump is done. There's no way he can win it without. But I also think we're going to win somewhere from four to six U.S. Senate seats. So the Democrats will take control of the White House, the Senate, and will pick up seats in the House of Representatives. President Trump is the first president in American history. He's never once had a 50 percent approval rate. People have hated the way he's handled the COVID crisis. Uh, yesterday, he said he was going to fire Dr. Fauci. Yesterday he said he doesn't want to count all the votes. I mean, really? He doesn't want to count the votes? We have counted the votes since the Civil War in this country. So I think he knows he's going to lose. I mean, the idea that you're not going to count tens of millions of votes. Uh, I, you know, I said on TV this morning on CNN, I said, he's gone off the deep end. Right. Well, uh, you were there in uh, 2000 when the election uh, came down to a Supreme Court decision following that big mess in Florida. Now, even That's before right. the election, President Trump is talking about mounting a court challenge in some states, Pennsylvania, for example. He's talked about already going to the Supreme Court. How concerned are you? How concerned should the Democrats be, not about even the vote tomorrow, uh, but what may come after that? For me, the important thing for us is winning Florida, Georgia, North Carolina. If we win one of those three states, then it doesn't even matter what happens in the Midwest of the country because we're going to win Arizona. And if you add a Florida or North Carolina or Georgia. So my hope is tomorrow night we are winning in the Sun Belt states like we have not won in years. If one of them goes Democratic, there is no argument for Donald Trump. He can go to court all he wants. At the end of the day, we are going to have the biggest turnout, as I say, we've had in over 100 years. People want to vote this president out of office. We've never seen anything like it. And we're going to count the votes, and we're ready. If he sues, we're ready. Game on. We've got thousands of lawyers prepared to do it, but we're not going to let them steal the election like they did in 2000. I can promise you that. Now, Joe Biden has run on a message of trying to attain some kind of unity, uh, reaching out even across the aisle, even when some Democrats have criticized him for that approach. Uh, but 
Uh, just looking at what's been on the news there the last few days, clearly the United States is not a, a united country. Many, many millions, tens of millions of Americans uh, not only distrust Democrats, they claim they fear Democrats, they fear a Biden administration. How realistic would it be for a Biden administration to somehow attain some sense of unity in the United States right now? Well, I've known Joe Biden for 40 years. I've worked with Joe. He's a very bipartisan person. He's got many Republican senator friends. He is going to go into office wanting to work with both sides to get things done. But if Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader, does to Biden what they did to Obama, where he told President Obama, I will not give you one single thing and I want to beat you, well, then we're going to have to play tough and we're going to have to do what we need to do. But you mentioned about people being divided in this country. You're right. It's because of Donald Trump. He is the most misogynist, racist president this nation has ever seen in its life. He has spent the last couple of weeks lying through his teeth about Joe Biden and everything else, that the Democrats are socialists and this and that. I mean, Joe Biden beat the socialist <laughs> in order to be the nominee of the Democratic Party. You know, listen, I was the governor during Charlottesville when I begged the president to condemn the neo-Nazis and white supremacists. Trump refused to do it. He refused to use their name, and he said there were good people on both sides. Uh, this is a guy who saddles up the neo-Nazis and white supremacy, and you but wonder that, why but, we're divided. But, but that problem didn't start with Donald Trump. Those You're talking about Charlottesville. We could cite many other examples. Those problems certainly didn't start in his administration. The divisions in American society certainly didn't start with this administration. Well, I'll disagree with you. Um, sure, we have had, obviously, tremendous issues as it relates to race and so forth. I think many people in Barack Obama, we had our first black president. But this is the first president of the United States who, the first day running for office, as you know, said that all Mexicans were rapists and drug dealers. He said he wanted to ban all Muslims from America. So it's the president's rhetoric that is different than anything we've experienced before. And in Charlottesville, well, I talked to these folks, and they felt empowered. If President Trump can say these things, we can too. President Trump unleashed a fury of folks to expose their hatred, and Trump made them feel like it was acceptable behavior. Every other president would have condemned the neo-Nazis and the white supremacists. Every president in modern history would have condemned them. Donald Trump refused to condemn neo-Nazis. My father fought in World War II. Right now, uh, I could tell you one place where Donald Trump is winning in the polls is here in Israel, where polls show a majority of Israelis uh, support him. Uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu was asked to comment on the race yesterday. He said it's important to always maintain bipartisan support, U.S. support for Israel. But he did list a number of President Trump's recent accomplishments or policy moves on, his, on, on Israel. And he, you know, he, he said aloud he would like to see some kind of continuity between uh, the, the uh, a, a Trump administration or whatever may come next. How likely is that with a Biden administration? Maybe the folks in Israel want him to win again. They're going to be in for a rude awakening tomorrow. But Joe Biden becomes president of the United States of America on January 20th. And he is going to want to work with our allies. He's going to want to work with everybody to build a global community where we respect everybody's dignity and respect everyone's views. So, you know, you're, you're going to see a good working relationship, obviously. I mean, Israel has always been one of our staunchest allies in the Middle East. And uh, we want to continue that relationship. We'll do it differently than Trump did, and I can promise you that. But I think it'll be all for the good. Right. One last question. Uh, and I say this as a Native American for the first time looking from abroad at the United States. Some concern about what may happen tomorrow. Talk of uh, conflicts at the polls, even violence. How concerned are you yeah. about that scenario? I'm not. But in fairness, it's a good question, Clev, because a lot of folks over here in downtown Washington, D.C., they boarded up a lot of windows, New York City. But remember why we're where we are. This president has called upon his supporters to get on the streets, as you've probably seen in the media through the weekend. His people have gone to polling intimidating. 
They're riding around in these caravans screaming at people. If tomorrow night Donald Trump declares victory and we have not counted 50 million Americans who voted and they will have voted by mail because they're very concerned about COVID. Elderly people do not want to go to the polls. Our military abroad, he doesn't want to count those votes. Then I don't know what will happen, but he's going to be, it's going to be a tough time. Donald Trump is going to be gone January 20th 2021. I can promise you that. We have had it with him in America. He's going back to Florida in retirement. All right. Uh, go All former right. Governor Let's Terry McAuliffe, thank you for joining us on I24 News. Let's talk today at the election. You'll see I'm right. Okay.